adventurers! Ever thought about soaking up the romance and mystery of Venice in just three days? Sounds like a challenge, right? Well, I've got the ultimate three-day itinerary lined up for you. And hey, make sure to watch till the very end because I've got some insider tips that you won't find in those guidebooks. So, if you're all about discovering the world, hit that subscribe button for more travel tips and itineraries. Now let's dive into Venice! Day 1, St. Mark's Square. Ready to dive into the heart of Venice with me? First stop, the ever-vibrant Piazza San Marco, Venice's main hangout spot. Right here we have the legendary St. Mark's Basilica. Trust me, its Italo-Byzantine style is a sight to behold. And if you're up for an aerial view of Venice, the Campanile St. Mark is where you should head. Oh, and right around the corner, the Doge's Palace, a must-see when you're in town. But hey, after all the sightseeing, if you feel like chilling, this square is sprinkled with cozy cafes. Grab a drink, sit back, and let the charm of Venice sink in. St. Mark's Basilica Ever heard of the Golden Church? Yup, that's St. Mark's Basilica. Its gold shines from the moment you see it, and this grandeur speaks volumes of how wealthy and influential Venice once was. Now, as you get closer, you'll be wowed by its unique Italo-Byzantine design. And trust me, the outside is just the beginning. Step inside and you're surrounded by golden mosaics that shine bright and the famous Polidoro altar. It's not just an altar, folks. The thing is dripping in precious stones. Fancy a view? Your ticket isn't just an entrance, it's an elevator ride up to the terrace for a breathtaking look over St. Mark's Square. Quick heads up though, since it's a place of worship, just make sure you're dressed appropriately. Cover those shoulders and knees. Now before I wrap up, here's a golden tip for you. Beware of those scammy websites selling fake entrance tickets for 20 euro that don't give you the full experience. A genuine ticket to St. Mark's Basilica will give you fast track entrance, exploration of the ground floor, a walk through St. Mark's Museum, a glimpse of the Polidoro, and of course that incredible terrace view of Piazza San Marco, the Doge's Palace. Next up on our Venice adventure, let's hit up the iconic Doge's Palace in St. Mark's Square. This stunning gothic palace isn't just eye candy, it was home to the Doge, the big boss of the Venetian Republic back in the day. Wanna feel like you time traveled? Step inside! Every room tells a story with its mind-blowing art and gives you a peek into the grandeur of Venice's golden era. And guess what? While you're there, you'll cross the legendary Bridge of Sighs. Stay tuned, I'll spill the beans on its intriguing backstory later. Quick tip, if you're not a fan of waiting in line and who is, head there early. Trust me, it's a hot spot in Venice. By the way, if you've got the Venice City Pass or the Venice Pass, you're in luck. You get in without shelling out extra. Gondola Ride on the Grand Canal in Venice when we say Venice, what's the first image that pops in your head? Yep, you got it. Those classic gondola rides weaving through the city's enchanting canals. Now, the Grand Canal isn't just any canal. It's like the main street of Venice, but with water. Cruising through it gives you front row seats to the city's stunning architecture. Imagine floating past historic buildings, magnificent palaces, and iconic bridges, all while soaking in Venice's romantic vibes. Sounds dreamy, right? So if you're planning a trip to Venice and looking for that perfect romantic touch, here's a little tip. Definitely, and I mean definitely, get on a gondola ride along the Grand Canal. The Alto Bridge we just wrapped up our first day in Venice right at the iconic Rialto Bridge. Now, if you don't know, this isn't just any bridge, it's the oldest one crossing the Grand Canal. And guess what? It's not just for walking, there are shops lined up right on it. Whether you're hunting for that perfect Venice souvenir, or some of that famous Venetian glass, you're gonna find it here. But wait, don't just rush through, take a minute, pause, and soak in that amazing view of the canal. Trust me, it's a sight you don't want to miss. Oh, and just a stone's throw away? The vibrant Rialto Market. This is where the magic happens, where the locals dive in for fresh produce and seafood. If you're feeling peckish, it's an amazing spot to grab some local flavors. 
quick tip for you. If you want a serene experience on the Rialto Bridge, try coming super early or really late. Not only will you dodge the crowds, but if you time it right, you might just catch a breathtaking sunset. Stick around for more from Venice, and remember, the journey's only as good as the memories we make. So keep watching, and let's make more memories together! Day 2, Rialto Market Welcome back to Day 2 of our Venice adventure! You know what, if you're in Venice and haven't hit up the Rialto Market yet, you're seriously missing out! This place is like a treasure trove of fresh produce, seafood, and those mouth-watering Venetian bites. Picture this, wandering through lively stalls, tasting some of Venice's best-kept secrets, and perhaps gathering some goodies for a cozy picnic later on. Sounds dreamy, right? Now, a heads up for those of you planning to visit, mornings are buzzing at the market, so if you want to soak in that authentic Venetian vibe, set those alarms early. By the way, if you're curious about diving deeper into the flavors of Venice, here's a cool idea. How about a street food tour? Trust me, it's the golden ticket to hidden spots and local dishes. You've got to try Cicchetti. It's like the Venetian answer to tapas. Carezonico. Ever thought about taking a trip back in time, right in the heart of Venice? Well, there's this awesome spot called Carezonico. And trust me, it's a hidden gem. Picture this. A grand 18th century palace, each corner decked out with the finest furniture, jaw-dropping frescoes, and artwork that'll make you go wow. Imagine strolling for two fun-packed hours with each room revealing a new surprise. And wait till you see the ballroom. It's a showstopper. Plus, want the best view in town? This place overlooks the Grand Canal, giving you a scene straight out of a postcard. Stick around and I promise it's worth every second. Gallery of the Academy If you're an art enthusiast or just curious about Italy's rich art history, then the Academia Gallery is a must-see spot for you. This isn't just any museum, it's a treasure trove of Venetian paintings ranging from 14th all the way to the 18th centuries. Ever heard of big names like Titian, Tintoretto, or Canaletto? Yep, their masterpieces are right here! Now, I've got a little pro tip for you. To skip those pesky long lines, grab your tickets online on their official website before heading out. And trust me, you'll want to set aside at least an hour and a half for this place because there's just so much to soak in. La Fenice Theater, Venice Opera the Phoenix Theater, better known as Teatro La Finesse. If you're a fan of opera, then you've probably heard of this iconic spot. But guess what? Even if opera is not your jam, this place is a must visit. Why you ask? Well, picture this. Majestic interiors, awe-inspiring architecture, and rooms that ooze elegance. The Grand Auditorium and the Apollonian rooms are a treat for the eyes, and trust me, you'll be clicking photos non-stop. Now for those of you planning a visit, it's super easy to reach. Hop on a Vaporetto and get off at Sant'Angelo's or Rialto stops. And if you have a Venice City Pass or an ACTV card, don't leave it behind. But here's a little secret for the adventurers out there. If you're hanging out near St. Mark's Square, you're just a five minute walk away from this architectural masterpiece. And remember, taking a wrong turn and getting a bit lost is just the Venetian way of showing you its magic. Day 3, visit the Venetian islands, Murano, Burano, Torcello. A. Murano Today, let's explore three magical islands that promise a day of wonder and history. Murano, Burano, and Torcello are three islands on the Venetian lagoon that are each worth a day trip. Ready for the grand finale of our three-day Venice adventure? Today, we're off to the mesmerizing island of Murano. If you've been dreaming of seeing Venice's world-famous glass art, you're in for a treat. Now, first things first. Heading to Murano is a breeze. All you've got to do is hop on the Vaporetto and get off at the Fundamente Nova stop. Got the Vaporetto pass? Perfect! You won't have to spend a dime. Remember to take lines 12, 13, or N and you'll be there in just about 10 to 20 minutes. Now, once you've set foot on Murano, famously known as the Glass Island, there's a bunch of must-dos. Glass Factories Ever seen how a blob of molten glass transforms into a work of art? Step into one of Murano's renowned glass factories. Trust me, seeing artisans bring glass to life is pure magic. 
Feeling adventurous? Roll up your sleeves and join a workshop. With a master glassmaker guiding you, you'll be crafting your own little masterpiece. The Glass Museum, Museo del Vetro. Dive deep into the world of glass art. This place traces the journey of glassmaking from ancient times right up to today. Best part? If you have the Venice City Pass, you're good to go. Church of Santa Maria e San Donato. A church with some legendary stories, it's got dazzling Byzantine mosaics, and brace yourselves, the bones of a dragon defeated by St. Donatus. Island hopping on foot. Yep, Murano isn't just one island, it's a cluster of seven tiny ones, all connected by charming bridges. Why not explore and get lost in its maze of vibrant homes? And hey, maybe pick a unique keepsake or two. Food time. All that walking making you hungry? Dive into a local restaurant and let your taste buds revel in authentic Venetian flavors. A word of advice, don't skip the seafood. A quick pro tip, if you're not in the mood for multiple Vaporetto rides, consider a day trip. You can explore Murano, Burano, and even Torcello, all starting from the heart of Venice, St. Mark's Square. All right, folks, that wraps up our Murano day. B, Burano. Burano isn't just any island, it's a canvas of colors. Every corner you turn, you'll be greeted with vibrant, picturesque houses. It feels like walking into a live painting. And if you're a fan of handcraft items, Burano's world-famous lace is a must-see. Don't miss out on the lace museum, and the best part? If you have the Venice City Pass, entries on the house. C. Torcello as the sun begins its descent, let's journey to our next island, Torcello. Torcello might be tiny, but oh, the tales it has to tell. Imagine stepping into a place that whispers stories of centuries gone by. While here, the Santa Maria Assunta Cathedral is a must visit. With its roots in the 7th century, it houses some jaw-dropping Byzantine mosaics. And while you're feeling all historical, check out the throne of Attila. No, no, Attila the Hun never sat on it, but it's a piece of history nonetheless. Probably where the big shots of Torcello took a seat back in the medieval days. As the stars begin to sparkle, it's time to head back. Hop on the Vaporetto one last time, and as you head back to Venice, reflect on the memories you just made. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. If you want to experience more hidden wonders, make sure to stick around and watch the next adventure. And if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing travels. Catch you in the next one!